Hello YouTube, this is a tutorial on how to make skins for Realm of the Mad Gods. My name is Potion and I'm a closed tester. I'm also part of the user generated content group and as such I make skins for the game as well as some other graphics. Um, but as you can see by this list, I've made quite a bit and not all of these are mine, um, but quite a few are. So in this, sh in this video I'm going to show you how I actually go about it. First of all, I use paint.net. It's available for free. You can just Google it or check the link in the description. And I also use a lot of plugins uh, for paint.net. These will also be linked in the description. What I always do is check the uh, class template or rather the um, default sprites for the classes. These can be found on the static drips or also the description. I'll link it there. And for the purposes of this video, I'm going to make a wizard skin. So I'm going to, I'm going to take this area right here. It has to be a 56 by 24 area if you want to uh, implement it in Realm. So I'm going to take that. And I'm going to put it in a separate file. Next, what I'm going to do is edit the frames. Each frame of a, of a normal player skin is 8x8. Eight eight. And what I do is I take this area, this 8x8 eight eight area, and I'm going to copy it and put it into a new file again. And this is what I do for each of the frames. So I just uh, make a new file and I just edit it and then once it's done I can uh, port it back here until the entire sheet is done. So for an example I'm going to make a green wizard try to change the a hat a bit perhaps I can change the robe a bit as well Okay, it looks absolutely terrible, but whatever. Something like that. And once it's done, you can just put it back here and you can do that for each of the frames. Something that should be noted, however, is that the default skins do not have a frame here for the second uh, frame of the walking uh, cycle. But the new skins do have that, so make sure to not forget this. So eventually, once you're done replacing each of these frames, you get something like this. Um, however, it's kind of hard to tell what the skin would look like in game. First of all, this is extremely hard to see and there's no outline, there's no animation. So you might want to add those to present your idea a little bit better. Now what I do is uh, first of all the outline. For that we're going to make a bigger canvas. I pick a 60 by 30 canvas. And then I'm going to create a new layer and using one of the plugins I'm going to create a grid or a checkerboard pattern. I already configured, configured the colors here but you can select checkerboard and then choose the colors using the color wheel. And it's important to make it a 10 by 10 grid. The color is pretty much arbitrary, you just want a color that doesn't blend with the sprite itself. In my case it kind of does with the belt here, but it's fine. And now what you want to do is you want to make sure each of these 8x8 frames is in the center of these 10x10 10 10 boxes. So let's do that. I'm going to take these, this entire row and I'm going to move it into place. Uh, 
Um, player skins in game are five times uh, or five hundred percent reskilled or skilled. I don't know. I don't know what to call it. And I'm going to set resampling to nearest neighbor so it doesn't blur. Then using a plugin uh, right here, I can add the outline and the shadow. However, I use scripts and I already have one configured right here. So these, these are the same uh, functions as I showed just earlier. So using that script, I can create the outline and it looks pretty nice already. Next what I want to do is have the animation. What I use for that is another plugin. I use Animation Helper. And it's quite simple. As you can see, it is cycling between these two frames now. That's because the columns is set to 2. If it was set to 1, it's going to cycle between these frames because there's only one column. But there's two columns now, so it's going to cycle between these two. Frames is the amount of frames. If I had set this to 3, it would show this frame this frame and this empty frame right here. I have to up the columns as well. Oh, there you go. Uh, as you can tell, if columns is 2 but frames is 3, it's going to go this, this and then this. So you have to mess around with that a little bit. For the purposes of, of uh, previewing the skin, you can just use 2 for these. I set the frame rate to 3. This is just how fast it will animate. And then I set the zoom to 10. This also depends on whether the sprite is small or whether you already scaled it upwards. Uh, using these buttons you can uh, pretty much, pretty much uh, select the location of your animation or the part that you want to preview. So yeah, there you go. You can also export the animated frames using this button and then you can save it uh, wherever you want. However, I want to do this for um, the, sp the sheet that's already outlined, right? We want to create a preview that can be viewed by the people on Reddit or whatever. That's the kind of preview I want to make. So I'm going to make the canvas 16 by 16. I'm going to select, select this area Make sure you select it on the right layer. And I'm going to copy this grid. Or checkerboard pattern. There you go. And what I'm going to do is copy each uh, angle, I guess. Um, so uh, let's see, I'm going to put these right here. What it's basically going to do is cycle between uh, these frames right here and the frames that I'm going to put at the bottom back and forwards so these are the two walking frames here's the first attack frame and the second attack frame it's quite simple and then what I'm going to do is uh, make it bigger apply the script and then I'm going to animate it. Now this is roughly a 200 by 150 area. Just take my word for it. I'm going to set columns to 1 so it will actually uh, shift downwards. Zoom to 1 and as you can see there's the animation ready. Something that is missing however is the die mask. And I suppose I can shortly explain that. Die masks are quite simple as well. What you want to do is, uh, I'm going to take this wizard uh, frame for example, and this is how the die mask works. You want to take a pure red color and a pure green color. You can see if it's purely red, if only the red part of the RGB, RGB values are uh, higher than zero. And same for green, except for the green value. And what you do, first of all, is cut out the parts that you do not want to be included in the die mask. 
So I'm going to remove the skin color. I'm going to remove the staff as well. The eyes, the belt. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to uh, make it so the uh, rope is the main die or the clothing die and the hat is the accessory die. Red is the clothing die and green is the accessory. So I'm going to make this red and then I'm going to t take a darker red. Paint this in and the same can be done for green. And this is pretty much a good example of the dye mask. What will happen uh, when it's applied in game is if a dye gets used, it is going to take these areas, the red and green area, and that's that's basically how it applies the dye. So you can do that for your uh, entire skin and you have a dye mask. Okay, the recording kind of messed up. What I wanted to share with last is uh, an example skin or rather a skin that's already in the game. It's not released yet, but it'll be there soon TM. So uh, if you look at the dye mask for the skin, you can see how it works for the entire skin. Kind of messed up though, because the red part and the green part should be swapped. The red part is the clothing dye and the green part is the accessory dye. So in this case, it should be swapped, but you get the idea. If you use a dye, it's going to affect these highlighted areas, the red and green. I'm going to show you a time lapse now of an actual example skin. It doesn't look amazing, but that kind of shows the entire process, I guess. And that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching and good luck with the skin making.